Knicks family, what's popping? It's your boy. We watched the Knicks get destroyed by the Los Angeles Lakers last night. And if anybody disagrees that the Knicks were destroyed, then they got something seriously wrong with them because they were for sure destroyed. They were definitely destroyed last night. And then to make it even worse, they got to go to Utah and play a tough Utah team. Another one of those tough-nosed, hard-nosed defensive teams. Uh, and it's not going to be easy, ladies and gentlemen. Definitely a rough patch in the Knicks' schedule. We'll see what Mike Miller can cook up. We'll see what the Knicks can cook up. So, uh, you know, let's uh, let's get busy, ladies and gentlemen. Let's talk about this game and, and see what you guys think about it. All right? Good afternoon to you. Hopefully I can help you on your, you know, your midway, your midday work schedule. Hopefully I can help you get through it. Let's rock. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen. The Knicks take on the Utah Jazz tonight at the Vivid Smart Home Arena. You know, all these names to all these arenas changing around all the time and different this, different that. It always gets me. Sometimes they sound funny. But anyway, the Knicks take on the Utah Jazz tonight. Um, and it's going to be a very tough game for the Knicks uh, the Utah Jazz are a very good defensive team. Um, and they have some talent as well. You, you know, and they can score when they want to score. Before I get this going, let me change the name of the head coach because it's definitely not Doc Rivers, although Doc Rivers would probably do a, an excellent job in Utah. If he did coach that team, I, you know, he, I, I, he even got me stuttering saying that he would do an excellent job in Utah. But he's not the coach of the Utah Jazz. The coach of the Utah Jazz is Quinn Snyder. So I got that up there to make sure everything is accurate, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get on with the rest of the show. The projected starters for the New York Knicks, obviously the head coaches, interim head coaches, Mike Miller. The projected starters for the New York Knicks is Alfred Payton, R.J. Barrett, Reggie Bullock at small forward because it looks like Julius Randle is going to be out on personal reasons, Marcus Morris, and Taj Gibson. Obviously, like I said, the injury report, Julius Randle out on personal reasons. Uh, Dennis Smith Jr. is still out with an oblique. For the Utah Jazz, the projected starters are Donovan Mitchell, Joe Inglis, or Ingles, however you say his name. I think it's Ingles. I guess it's Ingles. Bojan Bogdanovic, Royce O'Neal, and Rudy Gobert. Now, normally that would be Mike Conley in the starting lineup, and Donovan Mitchell at the two, and uh, uh, Joe Ingles at the three. But Mike Conley is out with a hamstring. He's another one of those guys that's often injured. Just is. You know, he's often injured, but. I like Mike Conley, but he's an often injured guard. Anyway, that's the starting lineup, the projected starting lineup for the Utah Jazz. And you see what the matchups look like. Alfred Payton's got a match off with Donovan Mitchell, R.J. Barrett, and Joe Ingles, uh, Reggie Bullock, and uh, Bogdanovich, Marcus Morris, and Royce O'Neal, Todd Gibson, and Rudy Gobert. So we'll see that, you know, we'll see how that works out. R.J. Barrett's going to have his work cut out for him because Joe Ingles likes to come off screens and run around a lot. R.J. Barrett's going to have to work that. He's going to have to play some good defense. Let's check out the team comparison, ladies and gentlemen. The Knicks are 10-27 on the season. The Utah Jazz did 24-12 on the season. The Knicks are riding a three-game losing streak. They've lost to the Phoenix Suns, the Los Angeles Clippers, and last night were destroyed by the Los Angeles Lakers. The Knicks average 104.2 points per game. Uh, they gave up 111.9 points per game. They're shooting 43.4% from the field, and they're shooting 34.6% from three. They average 46.4 rebounds per game, 20.9 assists, and 14.4 turnovers per game. 
But the Utah Jazz, they're 24 and 12. They're riding a six game winning streak. They average 108.4 points per game. Uh, they, 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 their opponents average 105.9 points per game. They shoot 46.5% from the field and they shoot 39.1% from three. They average 45.6 rebounds per game, 21.6 assists per game, and they average 15.6 turnovers per game. Their offensive rating is 108.8. That's 17th in the league. And their defensive rating is 105.9. That's 9th in the league. The Knicks offensive rating is 104.3. That's 27th in the league. And their defensive rating is 111.9. That's 25th in the league. So clearly you're playing teams that are opposite each other, just like the Knicks were playing the Lakers last night. Lakers probably, you know, are, are not probably, they're a better team in the Utah Jazz. But man, when you're playing these tough defensive teams, man, it's just, it, it, it's tough to deal with. It's tough to deal with. It's tough to deal with. Now, let's take a look at the last 10 games for both of these teams, ladies and gentlemen. And, I, and, and you know, I, I just started doing this. I like looking at the last 10 games because it gives us a better idea of where these teams are and what they're doing. You know, you can always look at, you know, uh, everything for the season and how teams are playing for the season, but it doesn't tell the story. You know, sometimes the last 10 games really does tell the story, gives you a good parameter, and maybe you can even go to the last five games, right? Because for the Knicks, the last five games, they're two and three in the last five games, right? Um, they've been blown out in one. You know, they played a couple of close games. So, you know, it's good to just break it down instead of, you know, focus it on just, you know, the, the previous games. All right. So let's take a look at the last 10 games for the Utah Jazz. Um, not, the, not just the Utah Jazz, but for the Utah Jazz and the New York Knicks. All right. The New York Knicks in the last 10 games, they are four and six in the last 10 games. All right. And... They are average, and their offensive rating is much better in the last 10 games. The Knicks' defensive rating is much better in the last 10 games. Obviously, uh, they've been faltering the last couple of games. All right? They've been faltering the last couple of games. But the last 10 games, the Knicks, their points per game is uh, 103.9 in the last 10 games. Actually, that's wrong, so I need to change that. I thought that I did change that because they're actually averaging uh, something very different than that in the last 10 games. All right, so let me get to that really quick, ladies and gentlemen, uh, so I can make sure that I have this information correct for you. Uh, the New York Knicks, the last 10 games, are averaging 112.3 points per game in the last 10 games. That's ninth in the league for the New York Knicks. Let me get that changed for you so I can make sure that this information is correct. I thought that I changed it, and I guess I did not. So I'm going to make this change for you right now. All right, 112.3 points per game for the Knicks in the last 10 games. They're also averaging the New York Knicks in the last 10 games. They are shooting... 45.9% from the field. And, you know, I'm going to take this whole thing from the last 10 games down because it doesn't look like, like I have the correct updated information over the last 10 games, at least for the, for the New York Knicks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewind this, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, sometimes this is what you get on live TV. Well, it's not TV, but on live. It's a live show, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm just going to read it off to you what the last 10 games are, and uh, we'll do it from there. Because I messed up the infographic. So the last 10 games for the New York Knicks, they're averaging 112.3 points per game. They're shooting 45.9% from the field. And they're shooting 16.6%. I mean, <laughs> they're shooting 35.2% from three. 
All right, they average 49.4 rebounds a game, 23.1 assists per game. All right, that's the Knicks in the last 10 games. Now, their offensive rating in the last 10 games, I know this is correct, the offensive rating in the last 10 games for the New York Knicks is 108.5, that's 19th in the league. Their defensive rating is 110.1, that's 17th in the league. For the Utah Jazz, their offensive rating is 115.6. That's third in the league. And their defensive rating is 107.1. That's ninth in the league. So in the last 10 games, the Jazz are 9-1. and one. Okay? They're 9-1, and one and they are in the top 10 in both offensive and defensive categories. All right, so that right there is going to be difficult uh, for the Knicks to match up with, I think. You know, you're playing a team that's really been on a tear. Like I said, they've won their last six. They're 9-1 and one in the last 10. Uh, these guys have been on a tear. And the Knicks, obviously, have not been on a tear. They've lost their last three games. All right, so that's, uh, this is going to be a tough game for the Knicks. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be a tough one. All right, taking a look at uh, some of the key matchups. Or at least one of the key matchups. Of course, Donovan Mitchell, ladies and gentlemen. 6'1", 215. Uh, he's a guard uh, going up against Alfred Payton. 6'3", 195. Uh, Donovan Mitchell, 25 points per game. Uh, he's averaging 4.5 rebounds per game, 4.4 assists, and 1.1 steals per game. Shooting 46.2% from the field and 36% from three. Alfred Payton, he averaged 8.2 points per game. Uh, 4.1 rebounds per game, 5.9 assists, and 1.5 steals per game. He's shooting 41.3% from the field and 26.5% from three. Now, Frank Nilekina is also going to help out on Alfred Payton. Your boy, Emmanuel Moutier, is going to be playing the backup point guard spot. So both Frank Nilekina and Alfred Payton will match up against uh, Emmanuel Moutier as well. But we're going to have to stop this guy. All right, obviously, we know this guy can score the basketball. You know, so if you mess around... And, and, you know, we don't want to mess around and let this guy get off. Because he will. All right. Obviously, uh, Joe Ingles. Ingles. Uh, R.J. Barrett's going to be guarding Joe Ingles. R.J. Barrett's going to have to watch this guy running off screens. Um, you know, he does a lot of movement without the ball. I don't like that for the New York Knicks, ladies and gentlemen. I hate playing players that do that. Because it makes it very tough. You know, the Knicks are not a great defensive team. And we are not a great defensive team at all. When, you, we, when we play against guys that move around a lot, we struggle. And we struggle. And I don't, you know, this is, we, we need a bounce back game tonight. We need a bounce back game tonight. All right, Reggie Bullock is probably going to be matched off on uh, Bogdanovich. And it could be it could be RJ Barrett matched off on Bogdanovich. We'll see. But Bogdanovich is averaging 20.9 points per game. So it's probably going to be Reggie Bullock, the better defender. He's averaging 20.9 points per game. Uh, he's 6'8, 226 pounds. We'll see if Reggie Bullock, well, you know, we need Reggie Bullock to step up against Bogdanovich, play some good defense on Bogdanovich. All right, now you, you could also have uh, Marcus Morris playing on Bogdanovich as well. You know, matching off on Bogdanovich, I'm sure there'll be a lot of switching, you know, since some of these guys like Joe Ingles, uh, Bogdanovich are the same height, uh, Reggie Bullock, Marcus Morris around the same height, they could do some switching. 20 points per game, 20.9 points per game, 4.4 rebounds. Uh, he's shooting 43.9% from the field. He's shooting 41.8% from three. We cannot let Bogdanovich get loose on us. All right, because he's one of those guys that can kill us. You don't want to let him get loose. He'll kill us. All right, so Reggie Bullock, if you're starting at that three spot, we need you to step in, play some ball. Marcus Morris, we need you back. We missed you last night. We missed you big time. So we need you back in the building. Looking at some of the keys to the game, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the first thing that we really need from this team when we talk about these keys to the game is 
we have got to, first off, match the defensive intensity. These, the Utah Jazz are a defensive team. They're a hard-nosed defensive team. They've always been that. Of course, they had a few years where they were not a good team, but they've always been a team that based everything around defense and fundamentals. So we've got to match that. Control our emotions. Listen, they're going to be physical. They're going to bump us. They're going to move us. They're going to bruise us. Control our emotions. We don't have time for the Bobby Portises, uh, you know, to get te- uh, technical fouls or to get ejected from games. We don't have time for all that. Just play the game. That's all we need to do is play the game. Help on Donovan Mitchell. We're not going to expect Alfred Payton or Frank Nilakina to shut down Donovan Mitchell, okay? So we need some help on Donovan Mitchell. Help as much as you can. Probably need some help on Bogdanovich too. But definitely Donovan Mitchell. All right, we don't want, you know, a Damian Lillard type situation where he goes off right off jump. So we need Alfred Payton to play some lockdown defense, really try to get under his skin. We need Frank Nilakini to come in and do the same exact thing when he's guarding Donovan Mitchell. We got to shake it off, ladies and gentlemen. Before we get to the offensive side of the ball, you got to shake it off. Shake off everything that happened last night. That's why you got quick games in the NBA. Get it out of there. So if we match the defensive intensity, control our emotions, we help out on Donovan Mitchell, at least on the defensive side of the ball, we can shake it off. Then we got to get to the offensive side. Number one, let's not get stagnant on the offensive side of the floor. Let's keep the ball moving. We got stagnant last night. We got in trouble because we couldn't get anything in the paint. The Lakers were getting mad, deflections all over the place. Then we got stagnant, start turning the ball over. So that leads me to taking care of the basketball. We got to take care of the basketball against this team because if we don't, they're going to capitalize on our turnovers. We got to take care of the basketball, ladies and gentlemen. My keys to the game right there, ladies and gentlemen. My keys to the game. Let's see who we got. We got some guys building up here in the video chat. We had some guys in the video chat. Maybe we no longer have them, or maybe they'll come back. If you're free from work right now, you're on a on a little bit of a break or something like that, give me a call, 516-405-2246. I want to know what you think about this game. How you feel that we should attack this game. What you think we should do, because... This is not going to be a, an easy game to win by any means of the imagination. Uh, I can obviously see us leaving out of here on a four-game losing streak. I hate to say it. I don't want to say it. But it's the truth, y'all. Leaving out of here on a four-game losing streak. If you got something to say, man, give me a call, 516 516- 405-2246. I want to make sure that you get your questions in or anything like that, but I do understand that you're at work and you may not be able to get you may be you may not be able to get free. So I get it. In other news, ladies and gentlemen, while you while you're trying to get your calls in, according to Ian Begley from SNY, the New York Knicks are not exactly looking to be, may not be looking to be sellers at the trade deadline. Take that for what it's worth. I'll explain in a little bit. Let me get to a phone call. Call the on live with nothing but Knicks. What's pop? Hey, what's going on, man? How you feeling? One team knew that Morris wasn't playing. You know we didn't really have a shot to win, especially with Portis out, too. We needed the big guys today. But um, today with the Jazz, I don't really know how we're going to do it, but I think that we need a lot of scoring off the bench if we want to have a chance to compete. And uh, Mitch has to get it together because Taj is not the answer playing backup center. 
Yeah. Um, those- you know, our bench has not been – our bench hasn't been producing. There was a, yeah, some games we do, a lot of games we don't. Right. There was a there was there was a time where it felt like our bench was, you know, really playing well. Um, but the bench hasn't really been producing that much over the last few games. You know, and we really do need the bench to produce some more. You know what I'm saying? I agree with you one hundred percent. We need the bench to really start producing. Um do you think that Portis is gonna get more burn after what he just did, or do you think that they're gonna reduce his playing time since he kind of like Throws the game out of whack when he loses his emotion like that. Um, I well, from you know, it's hard to say from what my, uh, Coach Mike Miller says. You know, he didn't feel like Bobby Portis was trying to be malicious. Uh, felt like he took a swipe at the ball, but he missed it and and hit him in the head. Now, I I, I also feel like he took a swipe at the ball, missed. Uh, but when you look at his facial expressions during that uh, during that time. He looked angry for whatever reason. I don't know if they had, you know, a, a physical transaction or anything like that beforehand, but he looked angry, right? He didn't look like, no. yeah, you know, he yeah, looked he angry now. he usually has that mean mug, but I don't think that he did it, like, intentionally. He just doesn't have any lift when he jumps. He can't play deep. So All right, really well, well yeah, yeah, that's, that, that's the big thing right there. He doesn't have any lift, and Contavious Caldwell Pope was in the air. You know, uh, you know, you're getting ready to yeah. dunk the ball, and Bobby Portis swiped at the ball, hit him in the head. Uh, I don't think it was malicious. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people will look at it and say that it was, but I don't think it was malicious. Uh, so I don't think he loses any playing time. If he loses playing time, it's because he can't make layups. Yeah. Um, you know, he, you know. Do you think that and, Trier is going to get a um uh? He's going to get quicker minutes in the rotation since Dotson hasn't really been efficient the last couple of games. Well, uh, you know, he got in the rotation a little bit last night. Um, yeah. When Mike Miller finally figured out that Wayne Ellington wasn't going to give us anything. You know, he finally got in the rotation. And, yeah, I mean, he did okay. He didn't do anything spectacular out there. Uh, and I guess you wouldn't expect him to until he's actually playing some minutes, right? You know, then, yeah. then you know, is when you might expect him to really start to do something. So let's hope that, you know, he, he, he tries to, you know, he looks for a change and looks for someone who can inject something into the team because, um, yeah, 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 yeah I, I would it. love to see Trey. <laughs> Hopefully he does get some more minutes. You know, so... Um, well, my man, uh, you there? You still there? Yeah, I'm, I'm still there. I'm still there. Yeah, so hopefully he does get some more minutes. We'll see, man. But, hey, yeah, I'm going to let you yeah. go. Uh, we'll get a couple of calls here. Anywhere. All right. Uh, I appreciate your call. Let me get to another call here. Caller, you're on live with nothing but Knicks. What's popping? Hey, what's up, Sam? This is Kevin from Plainfield, New Jersey, man, a.k.a. Steve Mills. Steve Mills <laughs> in the building. What's going on, man? Hey, everything's everything. Yeah, last night, man, it looked like um, we were playing up against trees because everything was getting swatted left and right. And um, Yeah, everything. We, 11 blocks by yeah. the Lakers last night. Yeah, yeah. Um, so hopefully, I mean, I don't know what's going to happen with um, when we play tonight against, um, against um, Gobert. But um, as long as we don't have any more long trees, I think we should be straight, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, Gobert is, you know, he, obviously Gobert is not exactly, he's not Anthony Davis. Uh, he's probably at, at this point in his career better than Dwight Howard, but Dwight Howard is still a big boy down there, you know, so. Yeah. Uh, we'll thing, see. I feel like because one, he's a little oh, bit more, you I'm know, sorry. he's more, you know, he's more lanky and thin. I feel like if Mitch Robinson would do a better job on Gobert, then obviously he would against, you know, those two guys, Anthony Davis and Dwight Howard and even JaVale McGee. You know what I mean? Although Gobert is a good defensive center. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I was thinking about this. When I saw that Randall wasn't going to be in there tonight, it's going to be interesting to see if, I mean, how the ball moves without Randall being in there now 
if Morris is in there, I I think Morris is more efficient than than Ramble is as far as moving you know moving the ball and then you know when he has to score he has to score. But um, I think yeah. when I when I see Randall play, there were instances like last night with the um, bullock starting and a lot of times with, with RJ where he'll look him off and those guys are, are open all the time and he just will, you know, he won't hit him and, you know, he won't hit the pass to him. So it's like what I want to see tonight is how the ball moves without him in the lineup. What, what you thinking on that? Uh, well, let me say this. And, and and I'm gonna you know do a little uh, update. We may not have Marcus Morris or Reggie Bull uh, or uh, Julius Randle tonight. So wow. you know everyone you know clamoring to see a whole lot of the young guys. You're gonna see a whole lot of the young guys. You may see a whole lot of the young guys because uh, you may not see either one of those guys tonight. And yeah. you know if that's the case, um. I guess we'll see what it looks like, man. We'll, yeah, we're going to see what, we'll see like. what it looks if, like. If that's the case, then I expect RJ to really, you know, show out tonight. And I think um, I think it would be good to see um, they run some plays for Kevin Knox because you you were – I listened to your thing earlier this um, on my way to work, and you are totally right. It's one thing to not have confidence in your shot. It's another thing to not have confidence in your game. And yeah, I totally yeah, agree with you about definitely. Knox. I don't see the, the confidence in this game. So I'm hoping that tonight um, that Miller, you know, runs a few plays, you know, for him and tries to get him, you know, going to see if, um, you know, where we're at um, with his, with his uh, head and everything. And um, last thing I want to mention is I hope we get some of these uh, uh, vets, <laughs> you know, out of here. So that, because I really want to see uh, Kenny Wooten and um, Lamar Peters uh, in there. So uh, that's about it, man. You still do a great job, Sam. And um, love you for all you do, man. You take it easy. Appreciate and, you, uh, man. Enjoy the game tonight. All right. Have a good one. Okay, bro. All right. All right. Peace. Let me get you another call. Call you on live with nothing but Knicks. What's popping? What's good, Sam? Worldwide calling out of Long Island. What's going um, on, bro? You kind of just broke the news I wanted to talk about because uh, I was I was going to say that um, I heard Julius Randle is not going to be playing tonight. Now, I heard that reports are after yesterday's game, he was called in and spoken to by some team officials. Maybe it was the coach. I'm not sure what the discussion that they had was, but uh, supposedly he was really upset after the conversation. Let me read what it was, the comment. He was, uh, he was upset after the conversation, and then all of a sudden they said that he's going to be out today with personal reasons. Now, huh. his son was at the game yesterday. His wife was at the game yesterday. Mm-hmm. So his family's good money. I personally, and this is all just me speculating based on what I've observed, right? I already feel as strongly that, that this dude, Randall's a chemistry killer. He's the cancer of the team. Him and Fisdale both – together was diabolical for the team. And now Fisdale is gone. We've got a little bit better. We've got to get rid of Randall. He's condescending to the young players. He doesn't respect them. He doesn't uh, enable them or empower them. You know, he, he thinks that he's so much better than actually what he is when he's accomplished nothing in the league. I don't like that dude from at all. And I watched your breakdown yesterday when you kept saying another open three, another open three. Another open three. You go back and watch that that uh, film you put together. The culprit on almost every single one of those threes was Julius Randle. The dude was is it? sagging off to the paint. It doesn't give an honest defensive effort. Guys are constantly grabbing rebounds over him. I don't like him at all, man. His well, defense, I mean, I mean, you know, if you don't, I, I get ahead. it if you don't like him. But as far as last night, I wouldn't say that he he's the culprit. I mean, I know he was the culprit on LeBron at least one time. Uh, maybe twice, at least twice on LeBron, he was he was the culprit. But there were a lot of open threes by guys that he wasn't even supposed to be near. All right, Contavious Colwell Pope, he was open. He hit. He he was. I don't. I think he was three for four. Uh, and that's usually either R.J. Barrett 
or one of the other guards guarding him. Um, uh, the other shooting I, guard, I he was open a few about. times. That was, um, that was Reggie Bullock who who left him open in the corner for that three, and he, he closed out late. And then RJ was he he, sl- he slumped down on LeBron, but uh, at least six other three pointers. I watched your tape, bro. I watched it last night when you played it. Yeah, and I, I mean, I I'll go back and look at it, but it wasn't all. It was everybody, of, man. They random. took like they took like thirty six threes, right? I think they made seventeen of them or something like that. I mean, I, 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 I'm just not going to blame that all on Julius Randle. That's impossible. I watched the film, Sim. All right. He's so you're going to tell me, like you're going to tell me he left. He, Julius, I mean, most of those threes, LeBron took 12 threes. He wasn't even guarding LeBron most of the game. He was guarding Anthony Davis until Anthony Davis got hurt. LeBron James took 12 three-pointers. Two of them was on Julius yeah, Randle yeah. when Julius Randle was guarding when, him in the fourth quarter. Ball, they set picks. There's switches. He gets switched on to a player. He's not stepping up. Even though Bro, he's not it, it, it wasn't that. that. Player, it wasn't that. They were getting man, caught. On, it, 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 was, it, was, it wasn't that. I feel, like, I feel like you're reaching there. I mean, I'm not saying that he wasn't a culprit on a few of them, but he wasn't the culprit on most of them. He definitely wasn't like, the culprit on well, most of them. Maybe I am reaching a little bit, but that dude, if, I don't know. You've been defending him. And I, I I love your basketball knowledge and everything like that, but I don't really see how you could defend this man. I just don't because see it. I feel it's, like it's, everybody runs. I feel like everybody jumps on the same train every time. Every time there's something that comes out about a player, people jump on it with Kevin Knox or you know, Frank Nilakina. Every time something comes out with a player, people jump on the same exact train and then everyone's saying the same exact thing because for a while everyone was talking about Julius Randle and then as soon as he had 30 games you know he was scoring 30 points he scored 30 points three straight games and the media was saying some good things then everybody was saying some good things about him oh he's been playing well lately so you know if this and it's like yeah he had three good I mean, games come on, in a man. Row, but I mean, I'm, just, I'm just saying 40. I feel like everybody he's jumps on the same he's... train you know what I'm saying? Me, I just, I take what I see and what I believe and I say. I'm not jumping on any train. I don't give a damn what's out there. I feel like a lot of people jump on the same train and start beating up the same person over and over and over again. Right now, it's Kevin Knox. You know what I'm saying? And then if he has a few good games in a row, people going people gonna to calm down. Then they're going to say, well, yeah, we got to let him develop. We got to let him do this. And then it's going to go on to the next player. People get. I, I feel like people get caught up in the heat of the moment. You know, something is is considered a fact in science. When a lot of different scientists observe the same thing and come to the same conclusion, it's then considered a fact. When all the next and no, it's considered a theory. I, I, show, I believe it's still a theory. The same thing and have the same opinion. Then we're obviously we're all seeing the same thing. So there has I, to be some. I, well, validity you know what? It. There's a lot of instances in history where that was clearly wrong. I'm not even going to get into that. Well, that was clearly wrong. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people don't see the same thing. They just go on what 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 the what the latest hashtag is or what the latest trend is. I'm telling you, a lot of people do it because I've I watched a lot of people on this show switch back and forth. Like for example, when the Knicks signed, when had their signing this summer, almost I would say 80% of Knicks fans. We're like, oh, yeah, we did a good job. We did a good job pivoting. We did this. We did that. As soon as we were having, it wasn't good. That 80% went down to about 40% of people who still supported the team. And everybody else was like, oh, we did terrible in free agency. The players don't fit. This, that, this, that. People follow trends, man. You're right about that. People people follow trends. Uh, A lot of people did some backtracking, even media. I see Adrian Wojnarowski. Do the same exact thing because he sent out a tweet that, oh, the Knicks put together a good roster. Then this year when they was doing bad, he put out a tweet, oh, the, the problem stems to the Knicks' lack of roster construction. Exactly. But me personally, I've been consistent, and I've been I watching Julius Randle. And if he has five assists and four turnovers, that's not a good performance. If he has selfish assists, which, which is what he does, though, like what Rondo used to do, those aren't good assists. He messes up the flow of the offense. He doesn't respect the younger players, he doesn't empower the younger players, and he rubs them all the wrong way. You saw last night when RJ was playing without Julius Randle, he was shining. He was doing well. The ball was going through him. He was creating for everybody, himself and others. Julius Randle was 
not putting out the type of effort that we need from our main player. He just wasn't offensively or defensively, especially defensively. I'm not really worried well, about his offense other than his turnovers and his lack of uh, willingness to pass the ball out of the double team. But I don't really think it could be debatable that his, his defense is, is a huge liability. Probably the biggest liability on the starting lineup, you know? Okay. But, you know, we'll, I, we'll see. We'll see what they so do tonight without him. We'll, we'll see what they do tonight without him. Everyone's been clamoring for, you know, Marcus Morris and Julius Randle uh, to, to play, to not play. We'll see what they do tonight without him. All right, hey, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to let you go because I only got a few minutes. I got to be off by 2.30. All right, so I appreciate you, man. No, thank you, brother. Appreciate it. All right, peace. We'll, 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 we'll get a chance to see what they do tonight without Julius Randle, without Marcus Morris. You know what I'm saying? So many people have been clamoring for uh, this to happen. Well, it looks like it may happen tonight. All right, the Knicks play the... Utah Jazz tonight, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to run through this one more time because um, there's been some changes. All right, they play the Utah Jazz tonight at 9 p.m. at the Vivint Smart Arena in Salt Lake City, Utah. The projected starters for the Knicks, whose head coaches, interim head coach is Mike Miller, is Alfred Payton, R.J. Barrett, Reggie Bullock. Um, and actually, it's probably, yeah, Reggie Bullock, maybe Todd Gibson and Mitchell Robinson. All right, because it looks like Julius Randle is going to be out for uh, personal reasons, and Marcus Morris is going to be out for his a neck. All right, he was out for a sore neck not too long ago, and according to the Knicks PR team, uh, the injury report for tonight: Kevin Knox is probable with a sprained right ankle. Robinson yeah. is probable with a sprained left great toe. Dennis Smith Jr. is questionable with a strained left oblique. And doubtful for tonight is Marcus Morris with a sore neck. Out is Randall for personal reasons. All right. Uh, as a matter of fact, it says Julius Randall is not with the team. So, we'll, you know, we'll see what happened there. Uh, you know, Wes said he read something about, you know, there being, you know, Mark, uh, Randall being called into uh, the office. And then, you know, he left upset. Who knows what that's about? That could be about anything. I'm not going to speculate on anything with the team. I'm not going to speculate on anything. Who knows what it's about? All right. If that's, if that's the case, I haven't read it. I haven't seen it. I'm going to look for that information. Uh, if I have, you know, but if that's the case, I'm not going to speculate on what it is. All we know is that he's out. And so I think the starting lineups could look something like this. Some people would say to insert Kevin Knox. I don't know. I think that maybe you, you know, Kevin Knox hasn't earned to be in that starting lineup. Maybe it is something that could propel him forward. I don't know. Uh, but maybe you're looking at Alfred Payton, R.J. Barrett, Reggie Bullock, Todd Gibson, and Mitchell Robinson because Todd Gibson can obviously play the four. And for the Utah Jazz, who's head coach is Quinn Snyder, you got Donovan Mitchell, Joe Ingles, uh, uh, Bogdanovich, Royce O'Neal, and Rudy Gobert. Mike Conley is out with a hamstring. All right, looking at the team comparison, the Knicks are 10 and 27, the Utah Jazz are 24 and 12. The Knicks are on a three game loser streak, while the Utah Jazz are on a, th a six game winning streak. Right, the Knicks are averaging 104.2 points per game. They give up 111.9 points per game. They shoot 43.4% from the field, they shoot 34.6% from three, and they average 46.4 rebounds per game, 20.9 assists, and 14.4 turnovers per game. Their offensive rating is 104.3, that's 27th in the league. And their defensive rating is 111.9, that's 25th in the league. The Utah Jazz, they shoot, uh, or they, they, they average 108.4 points per game. They give up 105.9 points per game. They average 46.5, uh, they, they, they shoot 46.5% from the field. And they shoot 39.1% from three. Uh, they average 45.6 rebounds per game, 21.6 assists, and 15.6 turnovers per game. The offensive rating is 108.8, that's 17th in the league. And their defensive rating is 105.9, that's 9th in the league. Looking at the last 10 games for both teams, which is definitely going to be different for the Knicks tonight because you got, you're got possibly going to have two of your main guys out. Uh, the Knicks record is 4-6 in the last 10. 
Uh, they're averaging 112.3 points per game. They're giving up 111.9. They're shooting 45.9% from the field and 35.2% from three. Uh, they are averaging 49.4 rebounds per game, 23.1 assists, and 14 turnovers per game. Their offensive rating in the last 10 games is 108.5. That's 19th in the league. And their defensive rating is 110.1. That's 17th in the league. Middle of the pack. Just below middle of the pack, which their record indicates. The Utah Jazz in the last 10 games are 9-1, ladies and gentlemen. 9-1 in the last 10 games. Uh, they're averaging 112.2 points per game. They're giving up 105.9 points per game. They're shooting 48.9% from the field, 40.6% from three. Uh, they're grabbing 46.8 rebounds per game. They average 22.1 assists and 13.8 turnovers per game. All right, their offensive rating is 115.6. That's third in the league. And their defensive rating is 107.1. That's ninth in the league. In the top 10. Both of them in the top 10. Over the last 10 games, we're dealing with a juggernaut here. Well, not an offensive juggernaut. We're dealing with a tough team. I don't want to say juggernaut. A tough team. We're dealing with a pretty tough team, especially in the last 10. Um, it's going to be a tough game, especially without having two of your uh, stronger, older guys in the game. Key matchups tonight, Donovan Mitchell, 6'1", 215. He's averaging 21, 5, uh, 25 points per game. 4.5 rebounds, 4.4 assists, 1.1 steals. He's shooting 46.2% from the field, 36% from three. He'll be guarded by Alfred Payton, who's 6'3", 195. He's averaged 8.2 points per game, 4.1 rebounds, 5.9 assists, and 1.5 steals per game. He right, shoots 41.3% from the field and 26.5% from three. That's going to be a tough task for him, obviously. But he, listen, he's guarded him before. He knows who he's guarding. It's going to be a tough task for him. We're going to need Frank Nilekina to help out. We're going to need everybody to help out. All right. If, you know, Julius Randle's not on the floor, uh, if he's not playing and Marcus Morris is not playing, you insert Reggie Bullock. Uh, if Taj Gibson goes to the floor, we should still be decent uh, defensively. As a matter of fact, if Marcus Morris was playing, and Reggie Book was on the floor, you would say it would be, be an upgrade defensively. It should still be an upgrade defensively. Now you got Mitch who's going to be able to alter shots. Um, Taj Gibson should be able to play good at the four, good defense at the four. Reggie Bullock, good defense at the three. We're going to need him to play good defense at the three because he's guarding Bogdanovich, who's averaging 20.9 points per game. RJ is decent at the two, and Alfred Payton is good at the one. All right, so we should have a decent lineup on the floor if we use the starting lineup that I set. We'll see. The keys to the game, ladies and gentlemen. First off, we got to shake it off. Shake off last night's. Nothing you can do about it. It's gone. Get it out of here. Shake it off. We're done with it. All right, match the defensive intensity. These guys are going to come out and play defense. We got to match that. All right, as you've seen, they're one of the top defensive teams in the league. We got to come out and match it. Control our emotions. They're going to be physical. They're going to bang us. They're going to push us. We have no time for the Bobby Portises and all those guys to get technical fouls or to get ejected over some dumb stuff. All right, control your emotions. Help on Donovan Mitchell. As a matter of fact, you might have to help on Bogdanovich as well, but we definitely need to help on Donovan Mitchell. Help Frank Nilakina. Help Alfred Payton. Yeah, these guys to the help that they, that they need, but we got to make sure we rotate. One of the things we seen last night is the Knicks don't rotate well. When they did double team, because Julius Randle was guarding Anthony Davis, they would send a double team, and then on the other side of the floor, somebody would be wide open for three, might I add. So that wasn't Julius Randle's fault, because he was guarding AD who was getting double teamed. And that happened on multiple occasions. All right, do not get stagnant on offense. If you get stagnant on offense, it's going to be another blowout. And, you know, without, Mark, without our two leading scores, it might be another blowout anyway. But we'll see what these guys can add. We'll see what these young guys can do. We've been asking for it. We've been clamoring for it. Now we're going to see. Don't get stagnant. Move the ball. Take care of the basketball. But you know what? I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm going to be honest with you. We don't have Marcus Morris. We don't have Julius Randle, although Julius Randle averages about three turnovers a game. Could be a high turnover night. A lot of young guys playing, and that's okay. Nothing wrong with that. I mean, you know, obviously it's wrong when it comes time to the game, but that happens. It might be a high turnover night tonight. 
Now, hopefully not. Hopefully not, but it could be. Obviously, last night, you know, the Lakers, the Knicks, I think they had 17, 18 turnovers last night. The Lakers got their hands on a lot of balls. You know, a lot of deflections, a lot of tips. They're long. Hopefully, it's not a high turnover tonight. tonight. We'll see how that goes. We'll see how that goes, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, those are my keys to the game. The Knicks take on the Utah Jazz tonight. Uh, and it's going to be, um, you know, it's going to be one of those games, man. It's going to be one of those games. Hopefully, it's a a, a, a good game for us tonight. Uh, unfortunately, you know, I had some guys here in, in the video chat. I think I'm going to have to get you guys back later on tonight because I really, uh, really kind of rushing for time today. Uh, guys, it's in the video chat. So I'll make sure that you guys get in tomorrow. All right. Uh, and what I did want to say, though, and I didn't get a chance to say it earlier because I went to a couple of phone calls. Um, is that an article came out from Ian Begley. As a matter of fact, I'll let you hear from Ian Begley himself, ladies and gentlemen. All right. I'm SNY NBA insider. Ian. And let me let me just. Get that over there. I'm going to let you hear from Ian Begley himself as he talks about the Knicks and the trade deadline. Listen up, ladies and gentlemen. I'm SNY NBA insider Ian Begley here from Los Angeles. And one thing we learned during this trip to L.A. is that teams who have been in touch with the Knicks recently were left with the impression that the Knicks aren't solely focused on acquiring draft picks when it comes to making trades over the next few weeks. These teams said that the Knicks have also had discussions about acquiring players who can not only help in the here and now, but also help in the future with this roster. So that's something to keep an eye on as the Knicks continue to talk to teams ahead of the February trade deadline. We already know that they've received interest from Marcus Morris, Dennis Smith Jr., and Bobby Portis, and I'm sure there are plenty of calls being made about other players on this roster, and it's going to be interesting to see which direction the Knicks go because after this loss to the Lakers, they are 10-27 and 27 with one of the worst records in the NBA, but it certainly sounds like they haven't closed off the idea of trying to improve this roster in the short term ahead of the trade deadline. I'm SNY so, NBA insider Ian Begley here from Los Angeles. And one thing we learned during this trip to L.A. is that teams who have been in touch well, let me, with the Knicks let, let, recently. Let me, let, me, let me get that out of there. Sorry about that. Um, so there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's the, you know, that, that's the skinny right there. Sounds like the Knicks are not solely looking to sell at the deadline. You know, they might be looking to find a piece that's going to fit. Or whatever it is. Find a starter or something. We'll see how that goes. I don't know. Now, this is not coming from the Knicks. So, please, what I want to say to you, to you all, because this is what happens every time. Don't start calling the organization this, that, and the other thing. This is coming from Ian Begley, who's heard it from other sources, from people who have talked to Knicks about making deals. And, they're, and this is what they're saying. All right? Because this is what we do all the time. We hear what somebody else said. And then we take it as gospel. All we know is what the rumor is. That's all I'm going to say. All right? That's all. You know what I'm saying? Like, I already see. I already see Gamble say, Lord, Mills is awful. WTF. I mean, as I just said, that's Ian Begley saying what he's heard from other teams. Or what SNY has heard from other teams. That's all I'm saying. Just, just, just remember, there are sources. There's word from the team. And then there's the truth. Again, there's sources. There's stuff that comes straight from the team. And then there's the truth. Sometimes the sources or the team never give you the truth. So, that's all I'm saying. Let's not, let's not, let's not, let's not go batshit crazy. All right? I'm out of here, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I will catch you guys tonight. After the game, man. Peace.